Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at a GPU that is pretty much a classic now. The NVIDIA GTX 470 from 2010. This is the Galaxy version of the GPU with a very interesting design. It's basically a reference design with some aesthetic details on the shroud. It looks pretty cool though, although not quite as cool as the later version that had a better cooler design and a removable fan for cleaning along with a blue LED in the fan. That one was more commonly found, but I ended up with the modified reference design instead. The GTX 470 is a Fermi class GPU, which I think must be Latin for furnace, and you are warned right on the card to use a minimum 550 watt power supply. This card is just over 1 gigabyte of GDR5, uh, 1280 megabytes to be exact, with a GPU clock of 608 megahertz, a memory clock of 837 on a 320 bit memory bus with 448 shader units. It is a DX11 card with limited DX12 support that was added after launch, so it can support some DX12 titles, although not very well in most cases. The test system I'm using consists of an ASUS 990FX motherboard with an FX8350 CPU and 8GB of DDR3 at 1866. I'm also using Windows 7 as the OS since I had quite a few driver issues with Windows 10. I set a pretty aggressive fan curve to keep the temperatures under control, and overall it did pretty well topping out at around 70C, although it sounded like this 10 inches from my ear the whole time. So on with the testing. I will be testing out some newer games and some slightly older ones as well. Since I'm not benchmarking this against anything really other than itself, I have the FPS displayed, but I didn't record the lows since it really isn't going to be relevant. Okay, so on with the show. First up we have Hitman from 2016. At 1080p with low settings, high details, no anti-aliasing, in an area that has an awful lot of NPCs, the frame rate's in the 20s, but as you notice it increases quite a bit once you get into a less crowded area. Huh. You wanna watch it? GTA 5 from 2013. We have the settings mixed between high and very high at 1080p. Anti-aliasing and soft shadows are turned off and 16x AF is on, and the frame rate is consistently above 60 FPS. Hey, remember we gotta be careful with these rides, homie. The Simeon ain't about to dock my peg in. Homie, man, if you need some bread, I can hook you up with JB's tow truck. It ain't got glamour, but it's some money to be made. So him and Tanya can smoke crack in peace? Homie, I'm good. Kingdom Come Deliverance from 2018 is next, and this game was a little tougher on the old Fermi. At 1080p with low settings, medium textures, and motion blur off, the FPS at, at least in this area is in the 20s, which wasn't unplayable by any means. However, if you wanted a higher frame rate, reducing the resolution to 720p with the same settings did net us a few more FPS. World War Z, now this is a game from just last year, and even though it's not a very demanding game on hardware, I really expect it to be unplayable. At 1080p with low settings, anti-aliasing turned off, it was indeed very playable. There seemed to be some stuttering in the beginning that concerned me, but after a few moments it seemed to clear up. Damn it! Hudson straight ahead, but I don't see a way! Creeper taken out. Reloading. Continuing with the zombie theme, Left 4 Dead 2 from 2009. At 1080p, with the settings at high and very high, 4x MSAA and 16x AF, we are averaging right around 120 plus FPS. And the zombie theme continues with Resident Evil 3, and this is a game from just this year, 
making a GPU an entire decade older than the game, and yet it still ran it at 1080p, no less. With low settings and high textures, it sat right at 30 FPS. There was indeed some stuttering, no doubt due to the low VRAM on the GPU, but I mean, it was still pretty impressive that it ran it this well nonetheless. Rise of the Tomb Raider from 2015 ran pretty well also. FPS here is in the 40s at 1080p with all settings on low. From playing in different areas, I did notice the frame rate would drop closer to 30 in areas with a lot of vegetation. However, it was still perfectly playable. I did also test Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and it played with FPS in the 20s, mostly lower 20s. However, it was unplayable due to a lot of graphical glitching on certain textures like Shadow, skin, and clothing. This must be a Fermi driver issue, as I've noticed it before and I've never figured out how to get around it. Tomb Raider from 2013, I was able to set all settings to ultimate at 1080p and pretty much maintain about 30 FPS with some dips down to the mid 20s. But you could easily lower some of the settings and easily get 60 plus FPS and still have an incredible looking game. Wreckfest is a game that came out on PC in 2014, and it can be more demanding than you would think. At 1080p with everything set to low, we get just about 60 FPS with all the cars on the screen, and as soon as you start to clear them, the frame rate goes up. The only problem is the game looks really bland on low. Simply raising the texture, effects, and reflections to high changes the entire appearance of the game, making it seem far more realistic with dust, smoke, and flames, and still maintaining well above 30 FPS. That's pretty impressive, even though it didn't really help my driving this time. Battlefield 1, here's a game from 2016 and it seems to do well on a lot of older hardware. At 1080p low settings, this card is no exception. 30 FPS was not bad considering the age difference between the GPU and the game. And you know we can't leave without testing the card out on Crisis. Here we are of course at 1080p, medium settings overall, with textures, objects, and water set to very high. 50 FPS seems to be the minimum, and makes you wish you could have played Crisis like this back in 2007. The end levels of the game are really the worst though. You can start in the beginning and think your hardware is doing okay, but then as you get towards the end game, it just crushes your hardware and your dreams of finishing the game. That's not a problem with this GPU. So the conclusion I think I have here is that this is really a great GPU back in 2010. It's pretty amazing that you can still play some newer titles with it today. Is it hot and loud? Sure, but that's part of the experience of Fermi, is it not? For $349 in 2010, it was a good alternative to spending $500 on the flagship 480, and it was still very capable. Also keep in mind, we're playing all these at 1080p and the main desktop resolution 2010 was probably 1024 by 768 so nowhere near 1080p 
So to see it perform this well on more modern games at 1080p, that's really quite impressive. Anyways, I hope someone found this interesting. You guys stay safe out there, and I'll see you on the next one.